rest and fade me. Let mercy fall on me. And everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness of the Savior. The hope of the nation. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He knows and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Everything I believe in, now I surrender. Oh, Savior, keep you through the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he knows and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Thank you for joining us. Last time we were together, I talked to you about a song of hope out of the book of Lamentations using Lamentations chapter 3 verses 21 through 24. Again, in light of all that's going on in our nation right now, the unknowns, the uncertainties, people's questions, their doubts, their fears, I thought it would be good just to remind us that we have a God that reigns, that God is good, and because of that, there is hope, even in a seemingly hopeless situation. Again, I would like to remind you of what Warren Worsby said. He said, unbelief causes us to look at God through our circumstances, and this creates hopelessness. But faith enables us to look at our circumstances through the reality of a God that reigns in heaven, and this is what gives us hope. We talked about how good God is and that God is good all the time. Tonight, I'd like to remind you about God's steadfast love. Verse 22, the first part of that verse says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Steadfast love is translated from a word that refers to a comprehensive, incomparable love of God. Various translations render it differently. All of them are struggling to put their arms around this big word. The word basically means loyal love. It is love that is an act of will not a response of the emotions. It is a covenant keeping love. That's how God loves us. It is a steadfast love. God loves us because he promised he would love us and God keeps his promises. Verse 22 says the loyal, steadfast, covenant keeping love of God never ceases. That's comforting. There can be those that love you today, but change their minds about you tomorrow. But the steadfast love of God never ceases. 
There's never been a time when God did not love you. And there'll never be a time that God does not love you. Whenever I think about, again, all that's going on in our world, just to know that we're loved like that, that anchors my life. That, that stills all the noise that's going on in my head and reminds me that in the midst of it all, I am loved with a steadfast, loyal, covenant-keeping love. Now, this passage of Scripture not only talks about God's steadfast love, it, uh, it talks about God's compassionate mercies. God is compassionate in his mercy. Again, verse 22 says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. There's no end to his mercies. Again, steadfast love refers to the volition, the will of God to love us. God has decided on and committed to loving us. But mercies refer to an affectionate love of God. When we read of God, that God is merciful and that he ha has mercy, we can be assured that he is feeling our misery just as intensely as we are. As the writer of Hebrews taught us, the reason that we can come boldly to the throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need is because the occupant of that throne is a merciful high priest who is touched with the feeling of our infirmities and who sympathizes with us in our weaknesses. Those feelings are the foundation of his mercy. No matter how bad things are, God is still good all the, all the time and his mercies never come to an end. So we can experience his steadfast love, his compassionate mercies, but we can also experience the renewal of God's blessings. Now, I like that. In the opening line of verse 23 from our scripture text says, they are new every morning. Now, verse 22 looks back and remembers the past experiences of God's goodness. Verse 23 looks forward with confidence in the continual experience of God's goodness today and tomorrow. Right now in this time, we wonder what we can count on. I want to tell you one thing that you can count on. God's blessings will be renewed day after day. They are renewed are made new every morning, new every morning. Mercy, like manna that we read about in the Old Testament, as the children of Israel wandered through the wilderness for 40 years, God provided manna for them to eat every day. They were not allowed to store up manna for the future. If they tried, it would spoil. They were to trust God for daily bread. And every day, God faithfully provided what they needed for that day. That's how God works in our lives. We never have to live on yesterday's blessings. Each day presents another opportunity to experience God's extravagant benevolence. It's new every morning. Mercy is an attribute of God which means that mercy is as old as God is. How can something that is as old as eternity past be new? Listen, every time that I see my granddaughters, I tell them, I express to them my love for them. 
Every time I see them, my love for them is refreshed or renewed. That encounter is just a new expression of an established fact. That's the way it is with God's love and God's mercy. Every day, the Lord finds a new way to demonstrate his steadfast love and his tender mercy. The consistency. That's the consistency of God's blessings. Again, new every morning. It's a paradox. On one hand, it's new. On the other hand, it's every morning. The innovative experience of God's blessing is a constant experience. What else can you count on in the morning? Really nothing. There are no guarantees in life. Health, strength, family, job, money, possessions can be gone by the time the sun comes up in the morning. But if you wake up in the morning, you can count on new mercy to face your new mess. That's why anxiety is destructive. Worry borrows from tomorrow. It ignores what God has already done. It questions the faithfulness of God on the basis of that which has not happened yet. Matthew 6, 33 and 34 says, but seek the kingdom of God. First, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. What's saying here is instead of worrying about tomorrow, trust God for fresh grace and new mercy in the morning. John Piper said, and I believe he said it well, you live on God day by day or you don't live on God. I want to encourage you again, trust God, rely on him. God is faithful. He renews his blessings every day. He is committed to loving us giving us fresh mercies and fresh blessings. We have divine resources in him that we can rely on and be confident of. I'm grateful for that right now, that I have a firm foundation of his word that I can stand on, build my life on and be confident in. Again, I want to thank you for the opportunity to share with you just a few moments of encouragement and reminding you of how good God is, how faithful God is, and that he has new blessings for you every morning. Again, I'd like to take this opportunity to pray and I would encourage you to join with me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I like that, our heavenly father, you're my father in heaven that I can call on, that I can trust in, that I can place my confidence in, and I know that you will not fail us. I pray God tonight, I pray for our church leaders, I pray for our leaders in government, I pray for medical personnel, all of these making decisions, fighting on the front lines of this illness. I pray God that you would give them the strength that they need, the ability to continue to go on and persevere. And Lord, ultimately our trust is in you. Thank you God for your new blessings every morning. In your name we pray, amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We really appreciate you all. And remember, you can always give at brookportcog.com or you can mail your gift to the address below. Stay safe, guys.